evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Cole, and I'm sure you're all familiar with me by now. Uh, in tonight, we're in Dr. Paisley's house, would you believe? And I'm sure you can hear the crackling of the fire in the background. The logs are exploding all around the household. Now, the Reverend Dean Paisley, like I say, has lent us his lovely house here. Instead of a studio at Havelock House, which is an absolute dump at the minute. Oh, and by the way, incidentally, Dr. Paisley's house is at Cypress 7, you're not Cypress 25,000 million kilometres away. Now, incidentally, also who we've got on the programme by demand is Robert, who was on our last Carry On Spitting interview. And we've also got Harold McCusker, who hasn't already called to the house at the moment. But we're expecting him, he's got an invitation card sent to his house yesterday morning. I don't know whether it's got there or not, but having said that, we'll not be missed. Well, first of all, Dr. Paisley, I have seen a lot of mahogany wood around your living room here, and it looks absolutely marvellous, and it's a delight to be able to bring this interview from your house. Well, all right, Mr. Cole, less for the crawler, less for the crawler. Well, parts of the mahogany wood was stole out of the Bartlett's Memorial on the Raven Hill uh, Road. As you know, I've, I've got a brave lot of wood there, uh, and my congregation and my flock and uh, members of my constituents helped to pay for the wood, which is now part of my uh, my living room uh, uh, quartets. Well, now, Dr. Paisley, I believe, uh, just getting off the subject of the mahogany wood and all the rest of it, that you had a couple of Negroes inside your church, or you said you wouldn't allow Negroes inside your church. Well, this is true. This is absolutely true. Uh, the reason I don't allow Negroes... Well, I don't mind if Negroes come into my church, providing they don't get out again, Mr. Cole. Oh, I see. I thought there had to be something behind it. Now, what about Mr. Jerry Fitt, or Lord Fitt, should I say? Lord Fitt, welcome to Dr. Paisley's house. What do you think of it? That's not bad, it's sorry. It's nothing to get overexcited about. Uh, it's, it's very nice, I must add. What, what are you trying to instigate, Mr. Fitt? There's nothing wrong with my house. I never said there was anything wrong with it at all, but uh, I'm in London, as you know, and my house, well, Jesus, would leave a lot to be this air compared to this here pit. Now, let me tell you something, Mr. Fitt, any more of that, and I'll be giving you a severe kick of the family alliance. Right now, we want to keep this going, Dr. Paisley, we don't want to get into any rut. After all, it is Christmas, and we want to keep this a festive programme. Right now, Mr. Barry McGuigan, after the last hammering you got there by your man, what do you call him, Jim McDonald, what are you going to do now? Have you hung your boxing gloves up, or is this, what are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to go into motor ra rallying, or what are you going to do? Well, as you know, Mr. Cole, I, I, I practiced real hard, and uh, I thought I was going to take McDonald out, but he, he was too powerful for me. I thought I was in the ring with four fucking Mike Tysons, but I couldn't withstand it. The punches were coming in left, right and centre. I, I feel as though I'm in the ring with him now. Um, he was a really good boxer, and uh, I, I would have preferred a full-blown kick in the bollocks rather than going another four or five rounds with him. Well, I seen what uh, he actually done to you, Barry. I thought maybe you'd lost uh, part of your brain on the particular night. I thought maybe if the like of you had a brain scan, you'd only see a white line. What are you trying to instigate? Well, we're not trying to instigate anything, but your performance on the night was a disgrace to the people in the north and the south of Ireland. Well, I'd done my best. I'd done a lot of practicing, a lot of running. It might have been at Vindaloo last night. I don't know what it was. But I did fight really hard. And you still got your bollocks kicked in. Come on now, Barry. Come on, for God's sake. I got a bit the two years with my wallop. For God's sake, are pranced about the ring like two ballerinas. Oh, but there's no need for that. I tried on my best. Well, we know that. You said that four or five times. What do you think of his performance, Jerry? Oh, for fuck's sake, I was a disgrace. And then there had a bit of fucking wrath and all. Never made it to the end. That was a disgraceful fight that day. I seen a better fight in a Vulcan bar, so I hoped I saw the night. Absolutely disgraceful. Right now, gentlemen, we don't want to get lashed into Mr. McGuigan too early. We'll leave him for later on. Now, indeed, Barry, a lot of people say that you'd done it for the money and you didn't give a shite about the fight at all. Is that true? Oh, no, that's a lot of nonsense. I mean, money doesn't matter to me. Uh, I've made my money. I I'm, worth a I'm worth about 1500 And as far as I'm concerned, my money's been made. Well, 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 let me interrupt you for a second, Mr. McGuigan. I don't like to keep interrupting the conversation here. Yes, right, money's no object to you. Why don't you donate it to the local church then? Well, if I was going to donate any money at all, Mr. Paisley, uh, it wouldn't be into the church, it would be into the pineapple. Now, Mr. McGuigan, you better watch what you're saying because you're in my flock. You're in my territory, should I say. Any more of it, I'll make your face like mine, I'll be not. Right now, Mr. Paisley, lay off from now. We're, we're, we're going to have to settle down. We don't want to get into a full-scale rut. Now, 
we're jumping ahead of this bloody thing here. Now, His Royal Highness Princess Charles, or whatever you call him, was Royal Highness Prince Charles. Now, you're over here tonight, and uh, by special invitation, of course. How did you get over tonight? Uh, actually, I flew my own plane over. I was piloting the plane at 25,000 feet. Uh, and I'm delighted to be here tonight. I really am. I didn't think I would get an invitation card as, uh, as beautiful as the one. All right, for God's sake, enough your fucking knees, big ears. What are you crawling for? Oh, sorry, Mr. Vizzer, I didn't think you were that sort of man. We all know you can fly an airplane, too. Anybody can fly a fucking airplane. Look, sick, let me tell you something, Mr. Fit. You couldn't fly a kite, never mind an airplane. All right, now, all right, there's no need for that. I'm getting at him, you're getting at me. Who's fucking said he on there? You shut the fuck, Mr. Fit, or you'll be on your backside now. Give it over. Right now, the two years give it all you are behaving like two four-year-olds. Right now, after that bit of a squibble there, we're going to interview Ronald Reagan, the ex-president of the United States of America. Now, Ronald, I'm glad to see you're here tonight. You've made, you're, I believe you're going very soon. Incidentally, you're going in a matter of a couple of minutes. Now, what have you got to say, Ronald, about being here in Northern Ireland? Does it not frighten you with the troubles and all the rest of it? Well, uh, it doesn't really frighten me at all. I, I've faced worse uh, atrocities than what has happened in Northern Ireland. Uh, the Iran Gator Fur, uh, we all know about that, and... Uh, that other fucking clamber who was fucking it up for us all in the White House. <laughs> but having said that, I, I'm only be only here for a, a very short while. I, I'm going to be doing a bit of whitewashing very Let me tell you something, Ronald. You're clear enough because you're scared of the people in Northern Ireland. And you can't stay, so you want to get back to your fucking shite house. You don't give a fuck about the people in Northern Ireland. You're here for a shite and a shave and you're away again. Oh, well, that's not very true, Mr. Paisley. I, I really do have to get home and uh, do a bit of ironing and a bit of washing. For fuck's sake, I wouldn't know what a wash machine was if I fell in your fucking head, Ronald. What are you talking about? Well, I know I wouldn't know because I'd be fucking dead, I reckon. Right now, that's it now, Ronald. Thank you very much for your... I believe you have to get on now and you've got a, a Joe Baxi outside, a Shankle taxi, incidentally. Right now, we're going to go from that and we're going to go to... Who else have we got? Oh, I, by the way, just before I continue on... Eileen, that is Dr. Paisley's wife, is very busy in the working kitchen pervert, perver I was going to say perverting there, sorry, she's preparing the Christmas dinner, <laughs> beg your pardon, I didn't mean to say that there, I hope you didn't, I missed her, because I know it was true, but there's no need for that, but she's in preparing the meal for, I think it's about 12 anyway, and incidentally we've got Sir John Herman, or Jack Berman, or whatever you want to call him, he'll be giving us an in exclusive interview in a matter of seconds, now, first of all, Dr. Pizzi, I want to ask you about these votes that you got at the last general election. How do you keep doing it year after year? Well, I must thank Mr. Peter Robinson a lot, because of the amount of impersonations he was doing at the polling stations. He wore out four pair of fucking Dr. Martins walking in and out of one particular station, and uh, that was to help to get the votes in. Surely the RUC would have recognised him, would they not? Well, the RUC would do anything for money, Mr. Colts, you know that. No, seriously, Mr. Ravis had dressed up in outfits uh, at least 30 times. His costumes ranged from a Robin Hood outfit to a ballerina outfit. And mind you, in the ballerina outfit, you could tell that Mr. Ravis was all bad. He was hanging out all over the place. Well, I don't know about that there. I'm glad I wasn't there to witness it anyway. Well, it's quite amazing the lengths people would go just to get some boats in. It's absolutely amazing. Now, Barry McGuigan, going back to you again, what sort of relationship did you have with Barney Eastwood? Well... At the start of my career, Mr. Eastwood was very, very good to me, treated me as though I was part of the family, and that, of course, meant he was taking housekeeping money off me. Um, he was very good to me, but then he changed. He used to wipe the shit in my arse, now he's hitting me in the face with it. No, he just got a wee bit big for his boots, and uh, uh, I had to go to bed early at night, uh, half nine or so at night. I wasn't allowed to stay up after ten o'clock, or else I'd get forty lashes. So I didn't mind that anyway, because... The wife didn't mind me coming to bed early because I was in giving her ten rounds. Aye, right, ten rounds of fucking cheese and toast. Who are you trying to kid by for fuck's sake? You fucking couldn't box egg anyway. Well, from what Irina Curry's been saying about the eggs, this whether I wouldn't want to box them because they're full of salmonella. Let me tell you something, salmonella's good fucking friends of me. Any more of that then I'd stick my boot in your bollocks. Right, Mr. Fit, you obviously got him up wrong there. Got him up wrong, I'll knock him up. Yes, I thought there was something kinky about you anyway. Right now, you just get, oh, give it over. Now, 
Another member. Hold on a minute. I should call him fucking dying to get a liquor here. For fuck's sake. Like, take it easy in that there Dr. Pizzi, you'll be getting full. It's a fucking general idea. It's fucking Christmas, isn't it? Hold on a second here. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, you're an ignorant bastard, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Now, what are you going to say there, Mr. Arco? As I was saying there before I was rudely interrupted, Sir John Herman, the ex-chief constable of the RUC, is in. I have to pull my seat forward up here. It's not me farting, by the way. Now, Sir John Herman, or Jack Berman, or whatever your name is, now that you've retired from the service, what have you been doing? Well, after doing a very demanding job uh, for the RUC, uh, I'm enjoying my retirement now. As you know, I, I got married very uh, early on there uh, to a Mrs. Paisley. And uh, we are both having a very, very nice time of it all. Uh, by the way, Mr. Cole, I would like to interrupt Sir John and uh, state to, to the people and the listeners that the Paisley married was not uh, a relation of mine, thank fuck. It was only another Paisley from the arsehole of nowhere. It's nothing to do with me. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Cole. I, I'm, I'm not uh, going to be upset uh, by Dr. Paisley's statement there. Uh, but first and foremost, before I go on to say about uh, my relationship with my new wife, which is uh, full of sex, uh, we're having a great time, uh, I'm whipping the backside off her as much as I possibly can, I sometimes feel as though uh, she's on period. Uh, I feel as though I'm conducting and orchestrating movements within the, the RUC ranks. For fuck's sake, Jack, get on with it. We all know what humping is. We all know what it is. Come on, get on with it. What will you do, mother? Well, I, th I think that's a very personal issue, Dr. Paisley, uh, uh, and one which I'm not prepared to go in, uh, into full-length details with you. All right, Jack, you tell him, Lord, put him in his place. Now, your wife's expecting a baby, we believe, Sir John, or has she had it? I don't know. Uh, no, I think uh, we have a couple of months to go, uh, and I'm hoping for a baby boy. Uh, he'll be in an IUC uniform before he's six months old, hopefully, but uh, I, I don't think... Uh, I'm not really bothered uh, whether it's a girl or a boy. But I, my preparations are on the way. Preparations, I mean, are you damned to preparate? Is that what it is, Mr. Herbert? Let me tell you something. Your wife and Debbie, all, all kidding us, right? You married your wife and you've got the girl pregnant in a matter of months. What do you do? Well, what do you normally do to get a girl pregnant, Dr. Pizzer? Would you not know about that? Well, now, Jack, let me tell you something. I'll come across the back of your fucking skull any more of that. Now, I mean, that's, there's no need. Now, Dr. Paisley, cut it down. Now, Sir John... When and when, whenever the baby is due and all the rest of it, when it's born, if it's a boy and all the rest, have you thought of a name for it? Well, actually, I was thinking of uh, Bartholomew or Constance. I think I, was, I don't know what sort of name I'm going to call it. You'd be better off calling it Blackie. Call it Blackie after the force, the blacks, the R.U.C. Black Bat and Rastards. Call it Blackie. Right now, Doctor Paisley, we're getting off the subject here. Now, thank you anyway, Sir John. We'll have another chat with you later on. Uh, Jerry Fitt, what do you think of Sir John's marriage? Oh, it's marvellous. I'm glad to see uh, Sir John Herman getting married, his wife up a soup and all. He didn't, didn't miss much time in getting on the nest, did he? Well, I don't know about that there, whether it was him that was on the nest or anybody else. My God, we're going to get done for slander left, right and centre here, but who gives a fuck anyway? Now, Dr Paisley, uh, you were going to say something to Jerry Fitt there. Yes, I would like Mr Fitt to go and get some more logs for this front that fire. It's getting very low. I'm your man, no problem, where do you keep him? Next door, there's a couple of apple trees here, there's a fucking hatchet. Hey, right, what the fuck do you think I am? I'm wearing a good suit, you know. And if I get caught, I'll end up getting fucking six months of sweetie battle. That's a general idea, Jerry. Well, if you don't want to get the long swim, I'll all just fucking freeze. It's up to yourself. All right, then, for fuck's sake, I'll get them out of back in a minute. Barry, did you see this? Did it? For fuck's sake, Jerry, leave the door on the hinges, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. As I was saying there, Barry, did you see the state of his suit? It's fucking shining. I know, whenever I first came in the night, he near blinded me, I thought he was a fucking knight in shining armour. Here, let's have another drink. Right, Prince Charles, what do you want to drink? Uh, I'll have uh, a Harvey Wallbanger, if it's possible. Sounds like a punishment beating. I wonder what's keeping that other wee bastard, Jerry. Right, let's get this liquor poured out. Is that enough for you? Oh, yes, I think that'll be more than enough. Just get it wired in here. I know it's not uh, part of our thing for royalty to burp or anything, sir. So. For fuck's sake, Charles, what are you doing, you stupid bastard? Do you wreck the fucking place? 
wait a minute, Charlie. Hold on a second. I hear, I hear sirens. Sounds like the RUC or an ambulance coming around. I wonder why they're coming here. Well, I don't know. Jesus Christ. Hold on a second. I'll get that. What the fuck happened to you, Jerry? Oh, fucking. Oh, God. My back's aching. My head's thumping. I'm bleeding. I was up a fucking tree trying to get the logs. And I fell on my fucking back. Well, let me tell you something, Jerry. Don't be getting any blood on my carpet, so I'll be mourning your fucking head laying open. Oh, God, Jesus, I'm in agony. I'm in real agony. Do you want me to take you up to the hospital? Do you fuck? I'm not missing my Christmas dinner for any cunt. Here, have you got a bandage or railing for my head or something? Just give me something for my head. It's laying way you open. Fuck, so give him a black bag. It'll do him all right. Come on, now, give us a bandage. Now, oh, Riley, could you take him into the next room and bandage him up for God's sake before he dies? Okay, come on in, Gerald, love. Uh, Jerry, just before you go, what do you want? Keep your hands to yourself and no groping in there, you hear me? What the hell do you take me for? Some sort of fucking maniac I went? It's just something you would do, Mr. Fitna. I'm telling you, just keep your hands to yourself. Right now that Jerry's away getting bandaged up in the next room, we'll talk more to Barry McGuigan. Now, Barry, just before we go on, what do you want to drink there? Here, have you any uh, Perry water? Because I don't take alcohol, so I don't. What the fuck do you think you are, Barry? A fucking Caesar's Palace? No, I just don't drink alcohol. Here, that was a terrible cut Jerry got in his head. Not half as bad as the cuts Jim McDonough left you with in the fucking rig, Barry. But I was boxing. Oh, so what you call it? Let me tell you something. I would have knocked the bollocks out of the prize the way you were prancing about. You were prancing about like two fucking ballerinas. Ah, so? Mr. Percy, the dinner is going to be served very shortly. Yeah, wait, hold on a minute there. Eh? Where the fuck do you get that bastard from? Oh, I hope you're not referring to me, Senor Fit. Hey, let me tell you something, China boy. Where the fuck did he... What did he bring him in for? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Fit. He was assigned to me by the government training centre under the YTP scheme. And he's here and he's doing a grand job. What sort of way did you pay him? Well, it's getting paid with a kilo of rice. It's not right for you, young. Yeah, valley, valley too. Now you come in next door and get dinner. You're a communist bastard. Fucking, and you hit him in there. I wouldn't have been fucking here and eat. Fuck, so you ripped the hole out of it, nay? Now, Mr. Fit, now you give it over, that's enough, right? Let's all get in next door and see if we can get our grub. Uh, where's Robert, Bill? Robert, where? I'm sitting over here, Sam. Come on, the fuck of that. Come on, let's get in here next door and get the grub of this. Right, now, let's see where you're all going to sit. Uh, Jerry, you move round the other side. I want to sit there beside Prince Charles. Fuck, sick of my poking you to death with that nose of his. Move on round a bit there beside that other Egypt. Uh, I hope you're not referring to me, Dr. Paisley. Look, Sir John, you're under the table, not at it, for fuck's sake. Right, uh, McGuigan. Yes, where am I going to sit? Just sit. Just you sit there, for fuck's sake. Robert. Uh, uh, I, I want a week tray brought over. You're sitting at the table like the rest of you. You're no different from anybody else. Fuck, you gonna fill me. Look at the state of it, for fuck's sake. a head on like a 50 bob cabbage. Now, Jerry, there's no need for that. Right, come on now. Now, let's see what we've got here. Where's that fucking Chinaman? Oh, Mr. Paiser, first helping, coming out. Will it in now? Let's have it for you, young. Will it in? Hey, Mr. Paiser, can I have another drink here? A perry water. Hold on a second. Don't be fucking taking too much of that, Barry, for fuck. Of course, it's a bomb, that. I'm just getting a wee sip. Hold on. Uh, where's the fucking roast buds? Are we not getting any fucking spuds? Jerry, will you take your time? Fuck's sake, Eileen's in there in the room with that horse, slanty bastard. You can't do everything, you know. Fuck's sake, I'm, I'm fucking starving. Miss my potatoes! Now, hold on a second, you shut up, Robert, or else I'll leave you a face like mine. Charlie? Pops, Charles, what are you doing? Actually, I was admiring the steel, the cutlery. Fuck. Hope you're not thinking of sticking it in your pocket like. Mr. Paisley, here's our roast potatoes. Got them fucking down there, China boy, they get wired into it. See these. The fucking steam flying out of them. Like a steam I heard it flying out of my sheet last night. Now, Jerry, there's no need for that. Mr. Pizzi, the potatoes burn in my mouth. I was burning my gum. Because it's like a water, but my mouth's burning. I was just a bunch of mouth in my Fuck's sake, how you meant to eat your fucking dinner with that there sitting at the table? Now, name a fuck. Robert, you're meant to put the potatoes in your mouth, not round your cheeks, you stupid cunty. Do you mean to say he's stuffing spuds up round his arse? No, I'm telling about the cheeks of his gobbies, forget where his mouth is. Right, let's have a bit of fucking order here. Where's the chicken? 
You must have checked it. You'll have to go out garden and catch it, Mr. Paiser. Now, let me tell you something, China boy. Any more of that, and I leave you a face like mine, you yellow communist bastard. Now, get out there and get the chicken in here by the scruff of the neck. Uh, Mr. Paisy, could I have another drop of refreshments? You know, with a water tap, let's go and get it. I wonder who that there is, is it, do we? Good sick. Well, I won't answer it, Mr. Fit. It's probably the fucking bailiffs, but let them in anyway. Right, who's there? Uh, it's Harold here. It's Harold. Harold, he, Harold fucking wasn't. No, it's Harold my customer. Now open the door, please. Oh, what a beat, you hurry. Morning, in, kid. What's a crack? I'm not too bad. I'm feeling all right. I've, uh, I've managed to get this invitation card. I'm sorry I'm a bit late because it will stop the RUC when you fucking know the black bastards are everywhere. Uh, uh, please, Mr. Uh, McCusker, there's no need for that, you know. Uh, me being the ex-chief counsel of the RUC uh, would be the first one to defend such actions uh, on behalf of the RUC. All right, we all know about it now. Where's the grub? Where am I going to sit here? Here, Harry, just sit down. Where's the wife? I see she's just let you out for the fucking night anyway. Well, we're just about to start anyway, so just uh, get yourself settled into that way of seat there. It smells beautiful, Mr. Paisley. Well, I just farted. Maybe that's what you smell. You're insulting my wife's fucking cooking, Jerry. Any more of that, I'll break your neck. Here's your manager to bring a bottle with me tonight. I hope you're going to fill up. I'll fill up your drop at pace you want. Hurl no problem, because I ain't busting for a pump, like. Here you am. Let me tell you something, Mr. Fitton. You're cruising for a fucking bruising. Now, any more of it, I will. I'll have you over the table. Look, it's buds are hanging down there in your bottom lip and everything, and I can't get fucking eight minutes. Please, maybe pay any chance. Let me tell you something, Mr. Fitton. He's a guest. Like everybody else here, Todd. Yes, Mr. Fitton, I'm inclined to agree with you. Stop fucking bullocking you, for fuck's sake. I can't get it nice in peace. Every time I look at his bacon, I feel like we're irritating. Oh, yes. Using the big words now, Mr. Fitz. So you can fuck a dumb find Robert. Well, tell you what, then. I'll give him a bit of a harmless grub if he wants. Yes, I'm feeling it very hard to get it into my mouth, Sam. But to tell you what, you uh, go away to the back of the room a wee bit there. Or I'll go away to the back of the room. Right now. Open your grub really wide, Robert. Because I'm pulling this caddy pulp right back now. Open up there. Uh, now, come on, Mr. Fit, you're gonna break a windy for fuck's sake the force that thing will hit him. That'll just wreck the place. Good sick. Uh, Mr. Paisy, have uh, you any more refreshments? Do you want a ton of harp? Here, get that fucking word into you, Charlie. But I don't really like you. I don't, I'm scared of catching my nose in the mouthpiece. Fuck's sake, get a word into you. I see, that's quite... Uh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, it's very, very windy in here. Don't let it come out of the hurry into your arse, anyway. Well, how you manage it now, Robert? Oh, it's much better now. I, I, I'm, I'm good at catching the balls of meat, aren't I? You're marvellous, Robert. Just keep it there, son. Just keep it there. Hey, Mr. Peasy, I don't think that's a bit funny, him feeding them like that there. Shut your face, you'll fucking eat up. You left footer. Right now, what are we going to do? Mr. Paisley, I hope later on we're going to be able to sing a few carols. Oh, yes, we're going to be singing all sorts of carols, hopefully, uh, later on tonight. Uh, what do you think of the wife's cooking, Mr. Cole? Well, I think it's very, very tasty. Mm, it's, it's very, very... It's fucking rotten, for God's sake. It tasted better than the fucking Vietnamese boot paper, for God's sake. It's rotten. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Fit. I'll smack the fucking hell you. Uh, Mr. Paisley, what do you reckon? You'll know, break your fucking ear, you speak me like that, you wee... Hold on now, you two. Give it over. Robert, what are you doing near that tree? Fuck's sake. I'm jumping and giving myself a crack until I get recess. No, you're going to fall on your fucking ear, you silly bastard, you. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, no. You silly bastard, you, Robert. It took me a fucking hour and a half to pop that tree up for God's sake. Hey, fuck's sake, send yourself something. I'll bring his fucking ear. I told him not to go anywhere near it. Oh, this is. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. You stupid wee Bastard, you. Hey, Ian, come on, I gather around and get my hand up. Uh, come on, you fucking idiot, you. Get up, you fucking fucking. Could I assist in any way? Get out of the fucking road, big nose. We'll do this ourselves. You right now, Robert, you right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I've got a couple of pains stuck on my arse. Oh, Jesus. Silly bastard, look at that mess of the fucking place. Fucking balls land all over the place. There's two pink ones land there. Probably his for fuck's sake. Oh, Jesus. I need assistance. It's a fucking needle you need. Let's get this place back to normality. Jerry, pull the tree up there. How can I fucking pull that bastard? Look the size of it. I'm going to pull that there. Come on, give us a hand to pull it up there. Robert, you go away and land the fucking bedroom for God's sake out of the road. Oh, yes. I'm in, I'm in agony, Sam. I, I just wanted to get a cracker off the tree to pull with Mr. Herman. Uh, well, I'll certainly pull a cracker with you, Robert. Now, just 
You take one and I'll take the other. I don't mean not much to pay the answer about the tree. Robert, never mind. The fucking tree's all right. Right, now, you ready to pull it? Yes. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm reading a joke out. Well, what's it say, Robert? What's the joke say? Uh, it says, uh, it says, um... Give us that fucking thing. I'll tell you what that says, you fucking idiot. You. Right, sir. Uh, what does that say? How do you kill a hundred thousand flies at once? I don't know. Hit an African up the face with a shovel. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, yeah, that's terrible. There's no need for that, eh, uh, poor nigwogs. Man, no, if you've got chinkies running about the house, we may as well fucking condemn the poor nigwogs in there. Talking of chinkies, where is that, eh, uh, here, free younger, eh, uh, whatever the fuck your name is, move here. Yeah, what do you all call? Get another drink, bottle of drink, eh. Uh. Was that a tin of herb? No, a tin of special brew. Special brew, special fucking brunch. Give it a, eh. Uh, and get wet in there. Jerry, that's my last ten. You're drinking fucks. You wouldn't be crying me a hell on, I guess. Look at it here. It's drunk, take it there. Uh, uh. Right, now let's uh, get round together. Now we've got this tree situated up again, I'm glad to see. Now, Robert, if I didn't see the state of that tree when she comes in, she'll break your fucking back. She might be doing me a favour, so she may just she does. I would say so as well. Right, where are we going to run? Are we going to retire into a song or what are we going to do? No, Mr. Vizzi, I would like another glass of uh, German wine, if it's possible. German for a Herman, right enough. My pot, I don't know it. Here, you gritty bastard. Get that word, Andy. Uh, Mr. Pizzi, uh, is there any possibility I could use your toilet? Well, you know where it is, Barry. It's up the stairs and first on the right. Uh, and Barry, don't forget to pull the fucking chain off you. Somebody left a big crap down in the last time I was up to use the toilet. It wasn't me anyway. Well, get on your bike. Uh, hey, Mr. Pizzi, uh, see me quick in. Is, is there any other toilet in here? Well, it's not, Jory. He's, he's using the only toilet. I'm busting for a slice. Honest to God, I can't fucking hold it in, I swear. I'm busting to have a Johnny Kite. Jerry, I don't know where you're going to go. You're certainly not urinating in the sink. Are you sure you're not? I am in bust for a slice. I'll tell you what, there's McGuigan still got some soup in his bowl. Now, it's up to yourself if you want to have a slice of his bowl. Fuck, it's not the very gentlemanly thing, like, is it? But uh, I have to, I'm busting the goat. Right, here goes, now. Hold on there, get this. Hold on a minute there. Uh, now, get this here. Uh, Lot it. Right, just watch for him coming there. Uh. Oh, Jesus, I. Uh. Oh, it's better now, Jesus Christ. Oh, do you think he'd recognise the difference in that level of that soup? No, not that he's as fucking daft as a brush. Don't worry about it. Jesus, it's a sad relief, boy. Feel a hell of a lot better now. Mr. Pizzi! Mr. Pizzi! Fuck's sake, what is wrong with you now, Robert? I, I need to go to the toilet. I'm busting at the seams. I'm busting, so I am. Well, Robert, there's no other toilet but here. Go into the working kitchen, the kitchen sink's available now, away in there for God's sake. Eileen's not in there. Uh, do you see her now? Yes, away you go. Yeah, you okay. God's sake, Jerry, you meet them. Oh, for fuck's sake, see that he popping up my fucking grub and everything, so I couldn't even fucking enjoy it. Well, I enjoyed my meal, and besides, I don't care whether Robert was at the table or not, I really enjoyed mine thoroughly. I fucking say, and you're one terrible crawler getting Mr. Coop. Right here. Jesus, I'm glad I get that over me. Dear, oh dear, I feel a wee bit sick, so I do. Oh, for God's sake, Barry, don't you be saying that. I do I feel sick, honestly. Go down there and get the rest of that soup and you'll feel a hell of a lot better. Oh dear, oh dear. Did I didn't give me a top up? She did, huh? It's a busy! It's a busy! Oh, for fuck's sake. What is wrong with you now, Robert? Have you any toilet tissues? Jesus, I'm sorry about the mess. Have you any toilet paper? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, Robert, don't be telling me you have shit in the fucking sink. Uh, I'm sorry, but... Free man, young or cheer, whatever the fuck you are, come in here. Ah, oh, yes? Get that fucking mess cleared up. Pull that out with a scruff and neck out of the sink and throw it out the fucking back. I mean it. What? I'm only here to serve dinner, not here to clean kiki and sinky. I'll stick my boot in your bollocks and I get in there and get the shite cleaned a minute. Oh, no problem. I love it. You're gonna have to come out. I'm sorry, Bill. Thank you, boy. I'm sorry. You'll have to go out the back now. How am I going to clean this mess? I said clean it with whatever you can. It's the size of a Vienna roll. May not be able to clear all that out. You want me to ring dinner rod? Oh, for fuck's sake. I told you not to bring him a fucking wound, you better. I told you to pin the fucking hole. Let me tell you something, Jerry. You're the pin in the fucking arse in here. You better get up your arse and do something about it. Is he related to you anyway, Dr. Paisley? Now, let me tell you something, Mr. Cole. You're getting below the belt here. How the fuck would I bring the like of that in here if it was related to me? I felt sorry for it. That's why I brought it in. 
fuck's sake. Now, hold on a minute, Biddy. I told you the first place not to fucking shut your fucking face. Hey, hold on a minute, for fuck's sake, huh? I'll break the fucking ears of you, bastard, you ought to borrow it. Now, hold on a minute, for fuck's sake, help me to take the faith and fuck off. Fuck, there's none of that there. I told you about the fucking Egypt, you shouldn't have brought him fucking in, you hit me. So you get out of my fucking sight. Right, have you cleared that shit up yet? Yes, I mean, I got my arm right down into a sink. Dirty bastard, yes. Let's not bring a man into a fucking bucket of polish, Charlie. Actually, uh, worse than that goes on in there, really. <laughs> Which I wouldn't like to indulge in the details, but there is a terrible hum of poo-poo in Pee pee, fuck, you got an understatement, you need a fucking airspray in there. It's a fucking air strike, you need a fucking two ton bomb, you need dropping that work and touching it, stinking for fuck's sake. I'm absolutely disgusted. Now, my party has been ruined because of all this. Fuck okay, your bollocks, there's plenty of fucking liquor there, you have to get drink away there, hurts contended. Talking of liquor, I surely want a fucking bottle of drink. I actually wouldn't mind the little bourbon. Well, the off license is still open, fuck off, why didn't you get it, you cunty? Fuck this queer stuff. Mr. Pete, I feel myself getting very tipsy, you know. I feel it regurgitating. I do you honestly get me off. That cycle where my car was, I'll punch the fucking head, yes. Hey, hell, I mean, there's no need for that. Every fuck's in. Fuck, I tell you, Mr. Foot. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, you reckon, that was. Mr. Pete, shut your fucking face. Big ears. Now, two man funger, fuck my dick. Come here, let's have you. Oh, you're cold? You know your name anyway. Where is that shit? Did you clean it? Yes, it's out in the garden with the plants. It is good. Manure's good for the plants and the crops anyway. Right, now, let's have a bit of order about this place. We're fucking... We're wrecking the joint here. Let's... What about the wee song? Let's all sing. Yes, I want to sing. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Fuck's sake, give yourself fuck's sake and lay him a fuck as fuck and not got any more of his nonsense. Now shut up, Robert, let us all get together and sing this right. I'm sorry, Charlie, sing. Sick as up, you call it. Right, nay. What, what sort of, are we going to sing, uh, what about the soldier show? No, Jerry, any more of that, I'd stick my boot in your belly. Uh, what about uh, the Thieves men? Never fucking heard of it, what sort of way? What was that go? Uh, when, uh, fuck, I forget the words. Uh, what about Jingle Bells? Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle... Come on, Robert, sing it! I will do I will... I don't know the words. Oh, for fuck's sake. Don't have the fuck. I can't be bothered with this. We're going to have to get some sort of song concocted that together here. John Cole, can you... Well, I, I think maybe, uh, Hark the Hurl the Angels Sing, that's a nice little tune. That's not bad, I will consider that. Uh, Sir John, what about... Well, I actually like the, uh, one of the songs which the R.U.C. bands uh, had put... For fuck's sake, you're R.U.C. in the fucking brain you are, you're out of it in the last fucking eight or nine months. No, we're not singing that, we're going to have to sing. I think Jingle Bells has definitely got to be elected for this one. Jeffrey, I won't answer that door. Right, no problem, I'm your man. Right, he's here. Ho, 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 it's Santa Claus here. Let me in the yard. Oh, for fuck, you're Santa the wrong house. Back off. Ho, oh, let me in, let me in. Well, if it, will I let him in? Yes, let him in, for fuck's sake. Hey, man, man, Rick, come on in there, Santa. What have you got for us? Well, I've got lots of smashing presents for you all. Right, here's one just in here for you, Mr. Fit. Oh, fuck, I wonder what it is. Let's have a look. It's a pretty big box, as well. Must be something really good. What did you get, Jerry? What have you got? Fuck, it's, it's a bit of deflated plastic. Fuck, hold on a minute there. Put your mouth here and blow, hold it. <laughs> Fuck, it's got hair in it. Jesus Christ, it's a blow up doll. I've always wanted to have a blow up doll. Jesus, the first, that's the best blow job I've had in about the last three or four years of my life. Thanks very much, sir. Send us magic. Oh, you're very welcome now. Oh, we've got Mr. Hammond. What would you like? Well, I would like something responsible. Not something like a fucking blow up doll. Uh, what, what would you have there? Well, I think you'll be very interested in this one, Mr. Herman. Oh, fuck, a leather whip. Oh, that's marvelous. I'd love to hear the crack of this whip here. Robert, any chance of bringing your ass over here? No problem, I'm your man, Mr. Herman. Now just touch your toes. Hold on a second, man. Oh, that is great! Oh, shut the fucking horse of it! <laughs> oh, I'm a fucking horse! Oh, Jesus, that's a very nice present. I'm glad you brought that, son. <laughs> Fuck me, I simply cut the ring off, man! Little fucking hard yes you get for trying to be a brave man, you wee bastard. You. Right, what have you got in that sack for me, Santa? Well, I don't know what we've got here, Mr. Percy, but it's something rather big. So I need a bag for my mouth. Let's have it. What is it? Let's see what I've got in here. 
Oh, a fucking ticket on an Aer Lingus flight to uh, the Vatican? What the tell you, something? If you think I'm going to go over there and piss up that baldy, batten rastard you have another thing covered, I'm not going over there. Well, it's up to yourself, Mr. President. Who have we got left? Who else? What about Robin? We have to go... I want my present now! I want it now, so it's day. I've been hanging on for... Shoot your arse is fucking sorry you're not interested in your arse anymore. No, the pain's away now. My present must be there. It's in the bag. Well, Robert, you're going to have to wait because Mr. McCusker's going to get his present first. Oh, I don't want any present. I've had enough. I've fucking seen enough tonight to do me for fucking six or seven months. That's it. I never be back here, Mr. Busy. I'm absolutely dumbfounded and shocked at what went on in your house tonight. Get out the fuck, man. If you don't like it, get out. Don't give a fuck about you, Mr. McCusker. You're nothing but a South Ban MP anyway, you bastard. You're nothing. Get out of the house if you don't want to be here. Wait, now, fucking hell on now. Give it over. Now, hell on now. Hell, let me tell you something. Mr. Pity's welcome you into his fucking house, isn't he? He's fed and married you, cunty. And now, you're going to turn around and give all the old shit out that he's been giving nothing but a bad time. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Fit. If I had to go there, I'd crack a fucking ear you. Oh, will you, you bastard? I'd knock the fuck out of you anymore, you fucking lip. Why, right, hold on a minute, Jerry. God's sake, settle down. All right, now, Mr. McCusker, do you want to say any more? No, I fucking said enough. I said no, I'm said no more. Right now, let's give it all. Let's give it a little bit of water, gentlemen. Now, oh, Robert, what a... Yes, I'm fucking almost dead. I'm, I'm head down for it. What is it? I'm making them, making them patiently. Well, Robert, here's your big present. Oh, fuck, it's a paper. Oh, it's, it's a big present. It's very late, though. Just get that fucking paper of it, Robert. Oh... Uh. It's in that big box! There's nothing in it! It's like your fucking head, there's nothing in it! There's an empty box for an empty fucking head! What more do you expect? Who would have done such a dirty thing on him, Santa? Well, it wasn't my fault, Mr. Percy. I just give the presents out accordingly. <laughs> I've never done nothing! I'm an empty box for an empty head, that's who I am! You fucking couldn't have said it true, would you, cunty? Hey, when am I going to sing this carl Dr. to be to be Timmy get him yet? Yes, well, I think we're going to have to get the choir situated, and uh, we're going to get into the song. Right now, here we go, I'm going to start us off. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn. What about, hold on, Mr. Petey, what about, uh... Well, what another song must sing? Oh, jingle bells, ding. Fuck, Jerry, we don't want to sing that, for fuck's sake. Come on, let's sing Hark the Herald Angels. Sing. I want to sing Harry Joe, Harry Joe. Fuck me, I'll break your fucking ribs now. You're interrupting our songs. Now, we'll sing it all together. I will do it properly, Mr. Fitt. All right, no, you're a fucking big cheese. Go ahead. Right, now. I'll sing Hark the Herald Angels sing, and you'll come in after that. Hark the Herald Angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Fuck, I don't know the words. I don't know any other words. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fuck this here. I'm going absolutely fucking my shirt now. That's it. I'm out of nothing, this fuck's sake. Right, now, let's get this orchestra straight properly. Let's all gather round in a group. And we're going to sing this once and for all, and we're going to do it right in the vicinity of my congregation out there listening in here today. Or tonight, should I say. We want to hear you all singing together. We want to hear all human people together singing. And we want to hear you singing it aloud, because after all, it is Christmas. <laughs> Right, Jerry, let's have it! Say it for God and Ulster! Jingle all the way, where the fuck am I? Oh, what fun it is to read on the one horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, oh, jingle bells. Oh, what a bit of beef in the fuck sing. I'll learn you how to sing it. Oh, what fun it is to ride on the one horse open sleigh. Come on, Barry. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Come on, Charlie, come on, get your ears in here. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, you bigger puppy. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Come on, try them Oh, what fun! And then back in the next fucking boat, uh, yellow fucking cunty. Fucking open sleigh! Then I'm back in the next oh, boat. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way! way. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way! 
Fucking marvelous. Hold on, Tommy! Don't surrender! 